Good evening. My name is Thomas Keegan. This is with LibertarianProgressive.com. We're uh, conducting interviews uh, with independent and third-party candidates for 2012. Um, usually in the congressional races, we have done one governorship, um, and these are interviews that um, that you should hear. Uh, so you have more information and uh, end up with more options. Today we have Rob Oates, who is in Idaho um, for the first district. He's a libertarian and he's running against a Republican Democrat and um, one person on the pro-life um, uh, tickets. And uh, today's dates again is um, September the 6th, 2012. And Rob, it's great to talk with you today. Uh, usually how we start this off is asking, um, you, you know, what gets you motivated, what got, uh, you know, what drives you to be in the uh, 2012 on um, this exciting election year where, um, well, at least uh, according, you know, if you take a look at patterns right now, I, I mean, we see the Republicans and Democrats um, just going uh, further and further down in far as approval ratings, uh, being the lowest in, in record numbers, and uh, record numbers of people identifying themselves as independents instead of either of those two parties. And um, and so it, it, it could be a uh, November to remember. And what do you think, um, Rob? And so uh, good to talk to you. I see that you have been in some um, uh, elected office in, in the past, and so yeah, please tell us a little bit about yourself and what got you motivated today, sir. Well, absolutely. I, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to chat with you, and I'll be happy to uh, to share with you some of some of the uh, the ideas uh, that that kind of get me going and how I got here. I I have kids, and that's that's really the bottom line. Uh, my kids are growing up to the point where my uh, youngest is in college now. And actually, I have two in college, truth be told. Uh, but I have another, another older son, and I have a, a grandchild. My wife and I are proud grandparents at this point. And I look at what's going on around us, and I, I see terrible things. In fact, uh, uh, just a, a couple of days ago, the national debt clock, the, uh, the best estimate, I guess, we can work with as far as uh, uh, total national debt, ticked over or down to 16 trillion dollars uh, an enormous that's hole that's the t for the t like, uh, time out there so yeah did, that's with a trillion did us do you even know how much a trillion is I well mean, no i mean uh, you know there's some cool uh videos on youtube that that show some people's uh, efforts to 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 help us visualize what a trillion is but it's a it's an astronomical i mean it and it literally it, it's an astronomical term it was it was created to allow uh, astronomers to uh, to be able to quantify the vast distances of space, uh, numbers bigger than any of us thought we'd ever have to imagine uh, right here on Earth. And yeah, so it's like exponential. I mean, each of the you know when you go from million to to, to uh, billion, then to trillion, and. Um, uh, it, it's a, what, what do you think our, um, you know, our elected representatives had bought for us with that $16 trillion that they spent? Well, <laughs> uh, a whole lot of, of, of not much. I mean, uh, because unfortunately when government spends money, uh, it's, it's money they have to take from somebody. And, and my problem at the moment is that the somebody they're taking that money from is my grandson, and his future offspring. I mean, we're talking about numbers that are so big um, that it's it's hard to even visualize how we could possibly yeah. pay that money back. Our credit rating went down for the first time, I, I think, ever. I, I don't, and, and, and you, you, you know, and um, th there's uh, a lot of countries that have our debts and, um, and that we kind of have, um, y y I don't know, and it, it doesn't look like anywhere in the future we're going to um, be you try to wean ourselves to become more independent because 40 cents out of every dollar that we're spending right now, I mean, it's not like we just have that debt. I mean, you, you know, in, in like two more years, we might have 31 trillion. Who knows? Well, that's absolutely right. Uh, they, they're tracking now that uh, during his term, uh, President Obama has added five trillion. And they, they, the, the pundits and the politicians and the commentators, they toss this $5 trillion number around like, like, like it's an everyday conversation. 
you know, uh, back when I was a kid growing up, they used to say a million here, a million there, and pretty soon you're talking about real money. Well, I mean, I mean, and, and, uh, right, that's with a 0%, um, almost a 0% interest rate. So, I mean, but in the, and even with, like, I mean, the trillion's so huge that even with, like, a less than 1% interest rate, like, um, a, I, I think it's like 10% of our entire budget goes towards the um, uh, paying the interest. But it, if it were raised even 1%, 2%, 3%, <laughs> which is a normal place where it actually is, um, then it's going to take up like I think like like 40 percent of our budget, and that's sure. w when we, t you know, have the situation that that Greece is ha having. Um, now uh, it, it's yeah, I, I mean we we owe a lot of money, and um, and and it seems like what are we getting for it? Um, we weren't the ones who got bailed out during. Um, uh, the uh, to that you know 2008 when they told us the sky was going to fall if we didn't bail out these companies when well you know the, the really the same people are still in charge plus they got to get big bonuses and, and then you, you know you, half of our government uh, has uh, people from Goldman Sachs I, I mean not half but I mean there's a lot of people from Goldman Sachs who are regulating themselves and uh, well that's a it's a mess I, I don't know if we can actually say that out loud. Uh. You know, but <laughs> well, it's reported okay. on the news. It's That's right. just a, a humor there, okay? But uh, well, you might uh, you know get thrown out of a window from a very tall building. If, well, you know, you say that's true. Say that's true. And you know, our our our, our president promised that uh, that that he would break that tie, uh, the revolving door between the government uh, uh, officials, uh, appointed officials, and then the uh, regulators well, and the so lobbyists and all that. He broke that promise. I mean, I can understand it. So, some things when you get into office, you might, you, you know, get a bigger view of something and, and change your mind. But if that happens, you need to explain that to the American people and why and maybe debate what that reasoning is. It seems like <laughs> within the first two months, uh, I mean, that that promise was clearly gone, and that was just a sign of, like, um, you know, 15 other uh, broken promises uh, after that. So, I mean, you know, uh, along those lines, that, that line of, of broken promises, uh, one of the really stunning things about having a Democrat president is watching the expansion of the drone wars. I call it like the trail of broken promises, you know. Um, but <laughs> <go ahead. laughs> I agree. And, you know, Especially Baxter, if you're a hardcore progressive or something, you pro must be really mad. At the well, it has, you have to be. Uh, and, and the idea that, that both, both parties seem to have this thirst for killing people. They do. They used do. to be uh, used to be the Republicans were accused of being the warmongers, but uh, but the Democrat Party seems to be developing something of a taste for it too, or at, at least, and what might be even worse, is killings the, are business and business is good. <laughs> it is it well, is. or or at perhaps you know we're seeing some of the syndrome where where the the party of the president uh, tends to uh, give him a pass on things he chooses to do and not raise a big fuss in Congress about it. Yeah, now there are people who have stood up. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that, but not everyone ha hasn't. But I'm just saying, I mean, the same thing, like as Republicans, I'm sure we're really disappointed with uh, George W. Bush and um, and uh, the list goes on. I mean, we've been suffering under um, making uh, the lesser of two evil type choices for 20 years. And, and this is what happens. I mean, the, we, we don't have another four years or I don't know maybe it'll take another four years for people to finally wake up I mean people will eventually wake up I mean it's like uh, you know Pavlov's tests I mean you keep getting <laughs> shocked from the left and the right eventually you're going to take that other path hopefully well it's, uh, it's, you know that's a, another another big component of why I'm running there and, and uh, you know back to your question to give you a little bit more background before I before I delve off into some uh, rant here I've, I've been really a student of the Constitution and the whole liberty philosophy uh, since my dad and a couple of his friends began my indoctrination uh, training into uh, the freedom philosophy back when I was a teenager. And I, I went to, to college, I uh, spent some time in the military and then some time in private business after, and uh, eventually made my way back here to my home area of Idaho. And as I got settled and my family got a little more, uh, you know, grown up a few more years, I decided to get involved in actual political activity. And, 
uh, it was a non nonpartisan, but I did run for my local city council, and I was elected twice with a a strong local reputation as a uh, a, a libertarian uh, flamethrower, basically in the local paper. Uh, I had a a long term hobby of writing incendiary letters to the editor Great. to uh, try to uh, stir up you know local uh, conversation. So with that in mind, uh, my, my community elected me to city council. In fact, they elected me twice uh, to four-year terms. And I served seven of those years. And uh, just almost not quite two years ago now, I resigned from city council to accept a, a full-time position as my community's airport manager. That's that's great. Uh, I mean, I, I I think there's a lot of experiences in life that can bring someone to this job, and um, I think the main thing is, uh, you, you know, keeping your oath and understanding the Constitution, allying yourself with people who are also going to do that, trying to reach out at the same time, and uh, and, and and really knowing your issues and, and where you plan to go and, and you know what kind of integrity you're going to have and be able to express that in a way where people can feel confidence and. Um, and having that experience, uh, I think, is good. And also the military um, experience. There's been a couple people I've interviewed. I've interviewed a lot of um, this for 2012. We're p hoping to interview up to 50 different uh, people. And of course, there's hundreds more. These are just 50 possible people that uh, might get elected in a wave this year if um, if we do decide to elect something different. And uh, and, and and something pro-American for a change. I, I mean, a, a shot heard around the world. Um, and so, tell us about the first district a little bit. Um, you know, kind of let the listeners know. Like, um, yeah, just tell us about the first district. Uh, well, Idaho. Idaho, uh, Idaho is uh, down toward the end of population uh, as far as compared to other uh, states within our country. Uh, but we we're potatoes, so you know, I, oh, we got lots of potatoes, but we're about, I think, 43rd in population or something. Um, well, but we're gigantic in in, uh, in square mileage. You know, we have an enormous uh, uh, amount of our state is owned ostensibly by the federal government. And you know, this is, uh, and I'll get back to the district in just a second. But this is another one of the the reasons why I decided to run was I've spent a lot of time over the last several years uh, analyzing uh, what goes on up at the federal government level. And darn near everything that the federal government does, almost every action they take, is outside the bounds of the Constitution. And up to and including this notion that there's somehow uh, some constitutional authority for the federal government to own most of Idaho. And I have no problem with yeah, the... Is, was it over like 50%? Oh, it's a gigantic percentage. Yeah. yeah it's, oh, yeah. So they... But, and, and does... What now... Is, is, can, can Idaho do anything with that, you know, part of the land? Or do they... Oh, you know, we get tossed some uh, financial bones uh, in, the, in the sense of, uh, uh, of additional grants and uh, uh, rebates, kickbacks, that sort of thing, uh, on some of the timber which is uh, sold by the, the BLM to uh, private companies, uh, we get some lower rates on certain... Why not open that land and maybe let... Pe is it your state one of the states where people can grow industrial hemp? Or? Yeah, not yet. No, we're working on that, but, but boy, you know, it's, it's, all, it's been a strongly, uh, yeah. strongly conservative state, too, and so there's been a lot of reluctance in our legislature to, to move forward on that front, even though I'm pushing for it, definitely. I mean, what's the case that, I mean, true conservatism would um, uh, legalize that? Um, and, uh, I mean, if you're talking about Milton Friedman and um, uh, that, uh, w that, who, who, that other person who, he, a long time ago, he debated Ralph Nader, um, Buckley, William Buckley. Oh, William Buckley, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's. I mean, they both were um, marijuana advocates um, to 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 not have it be illegal, and and the hemp has doesn't even get your eye. That's. I mean, it, it's. I mean, that should be um, driven. That that seems like a point that could be like driven home and 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 woken up like in a debate or something. Because anyone who, they would have to be a really sly um, speaker to, to 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 after a good debate be able to still defend um, having hemp um, illegal which is different than marijuana 
Well, that's true, and it's it's strictly a, a financial uh, financial question, really. Uh, hemp, as a as a very natural, uh, growing, naturally occurring uh, plant, uh, does not have a strong lobby, whereas cotton and nylon both had very strong lobbies. And so, back in the '30s, uh, a fellow named Harry Anslinger was the the driver of this. He was our uh, essentially our first drug czar. Uh, but he was uh, in the pocket uh, of the uh, the companies that were promoting uh, other kinds of products, and hemp was in the way. Financially. So this is the thing that really irks me: um, is that you know that it's it doesn't even have the ingredients, the active ingredients to. It's like non-alcoholic beer, basically. I mean, it's. Um, oh, definitely yes. It, it, well, it, and you know what's what's really what's really sad is that the, we import hemp why from would other you countries. Want to grow hemp? What can you do with that hemp, and why would it? Maybe instead of the, well, I mean, I guess government pay kickbacks, you, you know, um, for allowing you to uh, cut timber. But I think Henry Ford said, I mean, we could save um, in a lot of, uh, you, you know, trees in our forests um, by growing hemp. I mean, there's so many uses for it. Well, and Henry Ford uh, built a prototype of, of one of his early car models uh, using mostly hemp-derived products. Hemp seed oil is, uh, is, has very strong medicinal properties that are being explored rapidly. The hemp fiber itself was used back in colonial times. Uh, as I recall my history, the, uh, the Declaration of Independence, I believe, was written on yeah, it's hemp the first parchment. Yeah, draft was, and I mean, John Adams said people have got to grow it. Uh, George Washington grew it. Um, yeah. Thomas Jefferson. They all said like it's 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 a duty, like kind of almost a civic responsibility. Um, I mean, our parachutes in World War II were built off it. I mean, you can make, um, you know, construction material with it. It makes a very strong plastic um, resin. You know, the funny thing is, back that you mentioned that World War II. Uh, by World War II, the war on drugs was was full on in the sense of of banning uh, hemp and marijuana both, yeah. and yet the government went to farmers and said, uh, we will carve out an exception and we, uh, we are directing you to grow hemp for the war effort. Right, right. They 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 make an exception actually, where because hemp was already um, illegal by that time, but they yes. they re legalized it, it makes, uh, just for that. It and makes absolutely uh, the the most uh, durable uh, ropes and other kinds of canvas uh, sorts of products. Uh, lots and lots of things Instead you can do of with hemp. Instead corn, it grows like a weed, so you can like re regrow it. It's it's a good like um, in, in between type crop between the different cycles. Uh, uh, it doesn't require as many pesticides or as many fertilizers. I mean, the yield of it compared to, you, you know, how quick you can grow it, and, and um, it's it's great. And there's countries um, banking in big time from it, like um, Australia is starting to, Canada is, um, and we import that hemp yeah. here to the U.S. Mm -hmm. instead of growing it ourselves, and we subsidize corn right now, um, and that increases every single product that has corn in it, which is, you know, a huge... Well, and, you know, in the, in the midst of this uh, terrible uh, drought that we're experiencing right now, the hemp uh, plant is very uh, drought-resistant. And it would also, a uh, hemp seed oil, besides the medicinal value I mentioned, it can be substituted for uh, diesel in uh, engines. And so you can actually run a vehicle on hemp seed oil. So there's just, you know, an enormous uh, number of products, uh, lotions and all kinds of stuff uh, is made. In fact, they are made now with hemp byproducts, even though, as you say, it had to be imported, the, 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 uh, the hemp material, since it's illegal to, to literally grow it here. Yeah, in the but, hundreds but see, of millions. We here we are, here we are, listen, listen to us, debating kind of the relative merits of a naturally occurring plant, and yet... What we're talking about, we're, we are working, you and I, right this moment, we're working under the auspices of a federal law that prohibits people from growing that plant. Now, if we were to and revert... we're in a society that accepts it or has been... Or maybe, they don't, maybe they just don't know what to do. I mean... Well, yes, but what I'm going to say is, back to my earlier point, part of the reason that I'm running is because I see government inaction all around us, and, and it's inaction in ways and in areas which the government has no business dabbling in. There's nothing in the Constitution 
that gives the federal government any sort of authority to regulate naturally occurring plants. Well, of course not. And, 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 and they, they want to regulate, like, if you can take your own vitamins, um, if, if you want to, uh, uh, you know, take diff all different kinds of herbs um, and, you, you know, these genetically modifying um, patents are... Yes. They, they haven't mm -hmm. even... They, they, they want to sue everyone else um, that's growing natural plants, and but at the same time, they don't want to be liable for spreading, you know, possibly... Um, uh, ecologically, uh, you know, long-term changing uh, habitats <laughs> with, with their, you know, genetically modifying seeds, like spreading out throughout the wild, and who knows how that's going to affect all the critters, and, and, and eventually down to us from the bees who pollinate uh, the, the plants and everything. I mean, to, to me, it, to the, the whole hemp d d debate is one of those things I kind of see as like, you, you know, you might have heard in some stories where the, uh, the, the, like the guard of the prisoner or whatever, you know, keeps beating the prisoner and says, how many fingers on my hand do you see? And, and, and they're only lifting up four. And, 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 but every time you say, um, I see four or however many it is, they, they, they hit you down and say, no, there's five. You see five. <laughs> That's what it is. I mean, we got to just, uh, th this, we got to fight back. We got to know what the truth is and, and accept it. And, um, uh, and, and inform ourselves and be willing to at least debate and say, huh, is this what they're saying true? Is this true? I mean, look into what's happening here. I mean, th and, and we know that the, the special interests have a grip in Washington. They're not letting competition compete, and, and they're, you know, keeping like a uh, monopoly, a cartel. The same thing with the parties. They buy yep. the parties, yes. and now the parties are just reflecting, you know, the people that um, that pay them, basically. <laughs> Well, and I, I told somebody the other day, you know, they said, uh, you know, why are you running? You know, we are, we have, we have a two-party system. And I said, well, yeah, thanks for the beautiful opening. Uh, we have a party of big government or we have another party of big government. You choose the area of emphasis because there are some subtle differences between the, the two older parties, but they've proven over 150 years that they're both the parties of bigger government. It's just a shadow of a difference that that's still like, you know, faintly there because that's how they were started. But the real difference now, I mean, as far as our military spending and um, you could say, uh, you know, our empire um, budgets, um, there's a difference between an empire and a republic, everybody, and, and you got to know what that difference is. And this is exactly what our founding fathers told us to, uh, uh, it, it, that you know, warned us against. I'm not saying we, you know, we're isolationists, saying we trade, we can have bases like in strategic places, but we don't need to overextend ourselves. This is civilian controlled military. And, um, you, you know, the, the, our contractors, um, you know, shouldn't be able to sell those weapons overseas and share those technologies. And, and plus they shouldn't be able to, um, you, you know, have us try to put into the budget where we guarantee that we pay them, you, you know, like 3% of our budget every year, like they try to propose or something. That they, right. Um, it, it's the, they, they, they want to be in the driver's seats, um, in, in other words. And, and uh, so, the, and that sounds like fascism when you have a corporation in the driver's seats. And um, we can't make informed decisions if we don't know what's going on there's so much in secret the cameras are turned to us instead of us putting the cameras on them I, everything is um uh the, the opposite it's orwellian we have a patriot act which is not patriots um you, you know yes it's it's the ndaa obama promised that he would uh you know, never signs signing statements that, um, you know, he's a constitutional scholar and, uh, you know, the <laughs> NDAA, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it, it's just the fact that he does it with a straight face and, and, and acts sincerely, I mean, is, I guess, you, you know, okay, well, I guess um, he's not, you, you know, acting weird about it so i guess it must have been the, maybe I'd, 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 you know, i i i you know i am well, he, uh, my fingers uh, up you know um, he looks so. he looks good in a suit and he presents a speech pretty well as as long as the teleprompter keeps running right right exactly. um, and you can but, see clips. but as far as as far as right. you know following through uh, or, or or even attempting to you know it's it's just uh it's just stunning uh, the difference between candidate Obama and some of the, the the comments that Senator Obama made when he was before he was an official candidate 
uh, pronouncements he made about oh, the mandate about health care is another one. I mean, he yeah. was in a debate. I was just watching it on YouTube not less than a week ago where he told Hillary, you, you know, that, that you can't like mandate people to have health care because, you know, you'll have a large population that are like um, sole proprietors or individuals that used to have like a uh, catastrophic insurance and um, and uh, that's not allowed under this. Um, so they would have to get a much higher kind of insurance and um, and or uh, they would have to pay a fine and, and they, they wouldn't be any better off. And, and plus now the catastrophic that they once were able to get, they're not able to. I know it has helped a lot of people in a lot of situations um, that uh, with children especially, but um, I'm just saying it's we don't have to compromise like being forced to buy from you know private insurance companies whose stocks just you know went through the roof and and everything after this bill passed i mean i, I mean he he didn't even champion a public option to even bring one up for those people that would have liked that so, i mean it was totally a sellout to the pri private insurance companies and that's it's corporate welfare. I mean, it was huge corporate welfare. I mean, well, and that took care of the banks. Now it's time to take care of the health insurance companies. And the, the real additional danger in, I mean, I agree with all that you've just described, but the other, the other kind of ominous uh, step, when you, you look, you step back from, from what you just described from an e economist point of view, with the, the swoop of a pen and a couple of years of phased implementation, uh, the government takes over a massive percentage of our economy. Yeah, that's that's true too. They're managing um, a, a massive section. It it is a merger. I mean, we rate, we have the separation of church and state. Should we not have the separation of corporation and state too? Uh, I mean, well, and it's it's funny because usually the Republicans are the ones who are accused of of the corporate. Uh, you know, corporatist kind of behavior, but here you're, you know, you described it to a T, the Democrats are coming on, and, but I don't think it's because they have a particular love of corporations, I think it's a, it's a question of control. It's, yeah, it's, it's absolutely, um, they're controlled by the corporations, uh, a lot of them are, and enough of them to, you know, vote for things like the um, National Defense Reauthorization Act of 2012, where they, uh, implemented um, indefinite detention. Basically, they have the right to just pick you up off the street and you'll never be heard of again. That's basically what it allows in a nutshell. And um, so, I mean, if that's good for you, just, you know, um, I, I guess just, you know, have a, uh, you know, uh, ignorance is bliss attitude about things. <laughs> um, now, um, that... It, it's well. Let's see what other is, is some issues. I mean, th these are big. And th talking about this is talking about the economy. But on foreign policy, I mean, I guess make no mistake um, that uh, even though you know we, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I propose. I guess you would propose. How how far back do you think we could probably cut the military budget and still be uh, very you know be able to carry a big stick enough to be able to defend ourselves around the world here well I, I we could cut it back dramatically that's that is the, the sad reality I mean I was a uh, like I was a military commander or pardon me like 2006 levels of spending or uh, oh at least yeah oh if not if not uh, further bad. back than that yeah uh, and that would be a huge amount folks <laughs> it, it would be a huge amount yes but but you have to remember too that that I would I would be a strong advocate in in Congress for 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 just simply uh, winding down all of our foreign military adventures and bringing our soldiers home. You know I oh, yeah. I I can see no strategic uh, U.S. Uh, purpose to being in Afghanistan or Iraq have or. Have they been on a lot of tours? I mean, is this? Um, do you think that's taken a toll? Um, do you think, um, they, I, it seems like to me, I think um, there's been a, some people have been asked to do a very, um, a, a lot of tours. I mean, is that true? That's well, the Oh, absolutely. I, I have, a, a, you know, I've, I've been out of the service for a number of years myself, and I did serve overseas, but I was in Korea. Um, but a friend of mine is, uh, is a currently serving a ranger soldier in a ranger battalion. And admittedly, they go on shorter uh, tours, uh, 
I don't know if I'm supposed to say how long, but nonetheless, he has been over and over and over again, back and forth, bouncing between Afghanistan and uh, Iraq. And it's and it absolutely takes a toll on families. It takes a toll on the soldiers themselves. You don't have to look very far on the internet to find the alarming trends in uh, U.S. soldier suicides. Yeah, no, it, it's it's one of the biggest um, casualties actually. And um, I remember at the beginning they were saying, oh, well, this war, you, you know, it's almost like they were trying to say like, um, you, you know, there there isn't as many casualties. The the, the numbers are actually building up to like, um, you, you know, significant amounts and. Not that every single one doesn't count. I mean, it was Cheney who warned us, um, who told us in 92 or whenever it was, that the reason we didn't invade Iraq is because it would be a civil war and a bloody mess and, and something that we wouldn't want to commit our troops to. Um, and um, so it, it's, it's so I guess he didn't heed. I guess um, it, that's the difference between him making a decision as a cool, calm, collective person <laughs> or him making a decision out of fear and, and you know, knee-jerk reactions. Um, well, you know, we're, when we went into Iraq with all these, you know, grand, noble public statements, uh, it, it ignores a basic reality that the reason the country of Iraq continued to exist in its form was was the nature of its government uh, that in the sense the dictatorial nature of the government uh, because the lines drawn in the sand forced together uh, factions who like the who, Kurds were, who, and the yeah, who were never the pals Sears. to begin with yeah. and so they were held together uh, by this uh, police state apparatus and there's certainly no no denying yeah, the fact was created by I think Britain or something a long time ago when they they drew the lines and or the UN just created Iraq. And well, we not, and we had a hand in it too. Yes, it it's was not a created like an original country or anything like No, Iran because was. Yeah. because for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years, the people that inhabited that region uh, were nomadic tribes people. Yeah, maybe they should have broken it up into three pieces if you know, um, that might have been a better result. I mean, yeah, I'm not so sure that would have served uh, US oil interests and uh, corporate interests quite as effectively. Yeah. But but you may be right. I mean, that may I mean, well maybe. be. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess they could vote on it, but I mean, or at least, you know, a very Well, but see that, you know, the other thing is you say that and I appreciate that and I agree with you in principle, but here we are, you and I, talking from our background as uh, growing up as Americans, where we have a history, and uh, even if it's a short country history, several hundred years, as opposed to the Middle East, thousands of years, but they have no, they have no similar construct government-wise. They have, a, have had tribal and nomadic kind of groups of people but they're not accustomed to the one man one vote sort of uh, style of representative government that that we we want to superimpose on everybody that we touch and by golly if you don't like it we will rain bombs down upon you until you do like it yeah now but you have to I, I think, I mean, don't you think like you know everyone or most people around the world there is some kind of sense of in their guts uh, some kind of sense of freedom and, and wanting you know personal responsibility and independence. I mean, that's why a lot of them have, like, um, fled. And, and there's that silent majority there, y y you know, that's, that's scared, you know. Well, I hope, I hope you're right about that. I'm, you know, I don't know a lot of, of people who are directly from the Middle East to have much of a, a sense from a, you know, an actual sample of my own to know if they really are yearning for freedom or if they're relatively happy with their their tribal styles and small units you know a community or you know what have you i don't know well, we uh, wouldn't really 100 percent know unless we talk to some people but um right but uh, i mean but i mean we are all individuals and that's one of the beautiful things about the libertarian party uh, platform and um i think there are a lot that do though that have escaped i mean just reading about it you know on on the um news and and uh, and maybe the alternative media as well you know oh that's definitely uh, that's absolutely true yes uh, uh an enormous number of people have left and they've 
they've gone to other uh, welcoming countries in in Europe, uh, many to the U.S. and and other places. So, so sure, people people uh, do want to pursue their dreams, and and if they have the means, they're going to look for for places and opportunities to do that. And. And, and I, mean, we, I mean, Iraq, that's, I mean, do you think we should have went into Iraq? I mean, or do, should we wait it at least to see if, you know, if it played itself out more, um, given <laughs> the negotiations like a chance? And, uh, you know, and every time somebody asks me that question, I, I think of, of, of the... Got Osama uh, bin Laden first, you know? Well, I think of the classic movie, uh, which was kind of a foreshadowing of all this, uh, called Team America. Yeah, yeah. You're familiar with that, <laughs> yeah, probably. Right. Well, you know, the, the, what you're really, I think, getting down to the heart of it, you're asking uh, what, what role should our country play as a world policeman? Policeman of the world. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people, they want to say, uh, well, you know, we wear the white hats, you know, we're the strongest, we have a, a, some sort of a moral obligation to, to help people being oppressed, and on and on and on. And... You know, at the at the end of the day, uh, some portion of that, you know, that that may resonate. But what we literally have an obligation to do is protect our country. And I think I think Jefferson had it right when he recommended, uh, more or less, uh, trade and friendship with all nations, entangling alliances with none. Yeah, look how many countries, I, I mean, the Ron Paul um, always points out the perfect thing. We, we fought in Vietnam, and, uh, and that was, um, it, it's, it, they, they, it was a long war. It was like, um, it was, you know, everyone knows the numbers about that and, and, and the experiences. Um, but now we're trading with them, you know, and, um, and we're actually probably, you know, making some money. And uh, so, well, yeah, I mean, we, we te textiles are now assembled and, you know, created and made in Vietnam and all that. It's a beautiful, lush country. But, you know, we spent uh, 10,000 days and uh, 58,000 U.S. lives and countless Vietnamese, North and South, both lives lost. I mean, and the same, the same situation in Iraq. You know, we're, we're putting our uh, soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, but mostly the soldiers and marines. Right, and, and you're right. It, it, it's, it's, I mean, who, is, who would be against us not wanting to, uh, to, to be there? It's, it's the big oil companies. I mean, do you think if, it, if we didn't have any oil interests whatsoever that we would even be there right now? Well, I think, you, no. There's a lot of other countries where, so. where stuff is hitting the fan quite a bit harder and there's much clearer violations of human rights and, and ethnic cleansing and all that going yeah. on. And, and that's sort of a, eh. Yeah, so, so what, yeah, exactly. And, eh. uh, so, I mean, now, I don't understand why, like, I mean, a lot of people, it's not why the other 95-plus percent of businesses don't see it on our side, like why we can't get those businesses onto the side of the people. I mean, it's just a couple of corporations that really have their grip around this country, but I mean, <laughs> if, if you look at like 95% of the businesses out there, I mean, it's, 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 I think it would be better long-term in, in, in their interest to side up to the Constitution, we the people, and it might even be smart for some of those big businesses to be happy with what they've gotten so far and kind of just um, leave the table uh, what would be, be before they're you know counted as traders um, but uh, it's so and, and just try to adjust their business model and, and change it for the future but I mean I would um, agree I agree they, with they're you. not going to survive in the free market they need like to you know have uh, unfair competition by getting their tentacles into our government through special interests and having using our military as their own private police force. See, and then with that comment, I, I agree with you 100%. And we, we come back around the circle to the basic libertarian tenant that, that we should not be using force to enforce our political ends. And... Everything that exactly. we're talking about tonight is is the using the police power and the the power of force uh, from the government, from the taxing power on down to using the military for direct intervention in yes, other countries. It's just war theory. I mean, it goes the same whether I, as an individual or whether as a whole nation. Right. And so far, 
you know, we're, we're very, very thin on the justification for a just war. And if anyone does attack us, even if we had a budget, like at, like, let's say, 2002 levels or whatever, um, that would save a huge amount, help get us back onto the path to prosperity. I mean, if any country attacked us, we would tear them up out of the earth and well, like throw them in a space. I mean, it, they wouldn't even be so. I mean, there's nothing weak about defense, about being smart about the budget and not count. I mean, if we can't stand up to special interests, then you know what kind of defense can we really have in the first place? Well, you're right, and you know the the real the real challenge, and I can and I can say this out loud from my experience as being a military person myself, is that we spend an enormous amount of time and money both preparing for the last war. Yeah. So we have a hard time looking forward. And so the military that we have is really focused on uh, previous wars, you know, tanks and heavy heavy artillery and uh, armored personnel carriers and and, and that's how uh, we elect like our that. representatives as well. I mean, um, I mean, hopefully, the, again, this is a time. I mean, there are constitutional people on the ballots. I mean, I'm, y y you know. Uh, oh, definitely. I mean, there's, there's not, and in fact, even on the the libertarian uh, ticket alone, there are literally hundreds of candidates yeah, across hundreds. the country. And we're just interviewing, y y you know, just a. Um, just a, 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 just you, you know, just giving you a sampling here. <laughs> I, I mean, you, you know, this is just review. Yeah, lp.org. I even done a lot of interviews with Green Party candidates. gp.org. There's hundreds of them. You can find the candidate list. You can go to the FEC website, and and or just basically every state has a Department of Elections or a uh, s Secretary Certainly. of State office, and it's either one of those two offices that has a list of all the candidates that are going to be in the ballot in your district. Even if you're not in Idaho or or someone's district, support them. Um, send <laughs> Robo some money. I'm serious. I'm really serious about this because I mean, Ron. Here's an example. I mean, Dennis Kucinich and Ron Paul, two of my favorites that I like to pay attention to a little bit. Um, one's from the 14th district of Texas, and one's in Ohio. And I'm in Florida. And you know what? I've given money to Ron Paul. I've uh, well, that's wonderful. Definitely campaigned for him before. Um, yep. And uh, put up signs for him. Well, now he was running for president then but i mean but still i it, it i would you know donate to someone in a congressional race i have done that as well um you know uh ron paul has been an enormous boost to everybody who believes in the freedom philosophy and believes in the constitution regardless of their party because he i voted helped. for ralph nader before when he was running as a <laughs> green i just i see these civil liberties issues war and peace or war on drugs are um, you know just being able to be truthful and, and people with integrity that are going to take their oath seriously. Um, I see those as get those resolved, and then we can debate um, you, you know education, energy, uh, uh, because everyone has to have their own desire to educate themselves, anyways. Sure. Um, and, and, and the environment and um, and and and, and those kind of issues i i mean um because these are going to affect those anyways i mean you know our military is the biggest spender of uh you, you know um gasoline and stuff so so i mean just reducing some of that might read and maybe we could use our military to purchase renewable energies uh, um instead of using oil you, you know and um that's from the ground i mean maybe it might use hemp who knows but uh, <laughs> and well and you know uh, with, other things with regard you know we were talking a few minutes ago about the military budget in particular uh you don't have to look very hard uh, out on the internet to find uh, some charts and graphs that that will show you that the current spending for our military uh is in excess of the next, I think it's 10 or 12 countries combined. Oh, it's more than that. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's like it's, the, no, it's, it's, it's like, I think, like, actually our budget is more than, the, I'm pretty sure almost the whole world combined. And um, so even if we did cut it back, it would still be a, a, about what you're saying right there about the next 10. Com um, and uh, now it, it's, we're, f I mean, we, we, we to, to defend ourselves, I mean, we're fine. I mean, even if we, use like half the budgets uh, oh, or half we could I mean we could cut our budget back to a third of what it is right now but but see that 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 
will show up a problem because those uh, the the lobbyists for the defense uh, contractors will scream bloody murder. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe th th you know they can do some things that are more constructive. I mean, maybe like Ron Paul was going to introduce, like I, he said, like I was going to, I'd pull back. Um, uh, and he was a compromiser. A lot of people, like, he always has to argue on principle, and, and sometimes he doesn't, I don't, he, he tries to give a political, like, um, statesman-like answer, but I, he, he said, like, you, you know, maybe we can take half of that, spend it domestically, and the other half go directly to spending down the budget. So he said that'd be better than what we're doing now by spending all of it. Um, I, I mean, maybe some of it could go to something that's constructive, like, um, y y y you know, ha pulling the bases and putting some of them here, guarding our own borders. Um, and, well, the uh, other, and also you know, maybe in outer space, some, uh, y you know, uh, y you know, some R and D uh, and space, and and like you said, looking forward, having the military of the future instead of the uh, the, the last conflicts. Well, we need we need our military to be uh, very focused on. Uh, on uh, helping to defend us against uh, um, small attacks, you know, terrorist kind of attacks, rather than a frontal assault. Uh, because yeah, it, because as if that ever, a frontal assault, we, we would just nuke them, right? So, I mean, probably, probably. But, you know, there's... I mean, and we it, could do that even as a last resort. Yeah. And, and we could, but, you know, I, I think... I think you know the the challenge you might not need to but yeah i i don't know if you if you spend much time overseas uh, or you listen to uh, the bbc or other kinds of foreign news broadcasts but you know our country is not viewed as the guys with the white hats who come swooping in to help so much anymore oh, we're viewed like as an empire like i i don't spend a lot of time overseas but i i have listened to the bbc and you know the CBC, Canadian Broadcasting Company, and, and a sure. couple other ones, and yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Now, let's go into some other issues real quick because okay. uh, we've got uh, you know just a f few more minutes here, and and, and um, so uh, you, you did put on there pro-choice pretty much, or, or and, yes. and you gave a you know a sincere reason why people can check that out at roboats.com, and um, that's R O B O A T E S dot com, and uh, you can find uh, campaign events, the issues, how to contact the campaign, how to donate. You have a blo blo uh, v blog to, to, to keep people up to date and stuff, and uh, it seems like, you know, you're pretty accessible here, and uh, and we're talking about changing the country. A part of it is also um, electing in individual people. Part of it is not um, supporting this uh, Republican, Democrat um, uh, parties a a anymore, and, and having some someone that reflects what's actually in the uh, electorates, which is the majority of people are not Republicans and Democrats. Please um, remember that. <laughs> keep that in mind. That, that's a point to, to, to keep making. And they have a 10% approval rating, so let's not reward them anymore. There are other candidates that are definitely qualified and um, and ready to do the job here. And, um, and even if it's for two years, that's why we have an this emergency break, it's built into the Constitution. It's the House of Representatives where every two years we can elect somebody new. And, um, yes. and so in case we need to uh, more swiftly. Um, so, uh, and, but do you believe that any taxpayer funds should go to, um, y you know, to paying for abortions? No, I don't. Okay. And uh, no. No, no, that's fair. And that that's kind of a, it seems like kind of mostly the modern, um, status quo where we're at, it makes more sense till we, you know, I guess learn more. Um, but uh, so uh, the other issues, I'm sh uh, the Second Amendment, do you, do you believe in people's um, right to bear arms? I, I see that listed on your um, website. Oh, of course, yeah. I, you know, I, I don't think that, uh, I don't think that we would, we would have what liberties remain uh, without the Second Amendment to being in place. And, and such a, a oh, yeah. wide... And people say, like, oh, you know, Second Amendment's not going to help anything. I mean, you know, the military, um, it's, well, 
it, it, it's it's a good psychological um, uh, check, and um, that's I mean one of the reasons why I think during World War II um, uh, the, the Japanese or one of the generals said they didn't want to attack us because you know we <laughs> all have we're armed to the teeth basically. Um, Someone assuming. with a rifle behind every blade of grass or something like exactly. that. Exactly. I mean, look at yeah. Afghanistan. I mean, if we're not even through there after 10 years, and I'm not saying we couldn't have been with the right um, strategies and stuff, but I mean th then I mean and and we're like you know hundred times uh, more uh, equipped than, than they are and uh, so uh, it, it's yeah it's it definitely is um, a deterrent for out of control tyranny if it ever gets to that point I'm not saying right now we're you know we're voting rock the votes and um, and so uh, you know and, and ju that's the way to do it like make it to be a, a shot heard around the world it'll be Absolutely. a huge election and um now our growing police state not only are we that's our homeland security and i you know yeah homeland sounds nice it to me just that phrasing of homeland it kind of reminds me i have to say of like you know the fatherland security <laughs> yes. or something like that um I mean, what, what happened? I mean, why not just FBI, C, you know, CIA's for international, anyways, not domestic, but the FBI's. We already had the FBI. Why not just make that better or something like that? So. Well, I'll tell you, I, I want to be be cautious about about signing up for too much uh, enhancement uh, to these organizations because, again, you don't have to search very far on the internet to uh, to learn about the uh, CIA-led drone strike uh, in Yemen where um, uh, al Awaki was... Yeah, wait till we hear that happening in the United States. I mean, I bet if Waco was going on um, about 10 years ago, or, or, I mean, nowadays, they probably just send a couple Predator drones after yep. them. And, um, well, and, and you know, th this guy, I, you know, I, I don't know why people aren't marching in the streets. This guy there was... There are people marching in the streets. It never gets covered, though. He was probably not a good guy, but he was also not... A, it's it, you can't prove he was actively working against our country when they took him out with a drone but you know beyond that a couple of weeks later they came back and they took out his 16 year old born in denver u.s citizen son yeah it's almost like where it's like like if that first point wasn't good enough um they they just made a second point to, to make the argument um like now it's 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 a sh sh a uh, cut and dry case like they, they yeah they killed his 16 year old son and um and yeah. The, the yeah and the the chilling part of it is is that the president is now on record as claiming the authority to to order the execution of of anybody oh yeah anywhere oh of course of course i mean if, if people don't see that connection then you're you, 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 like really just think about this for a second um anything that we do to someone else gives a precedence for us to do it to ourselves basically oh, yeah. i mean it's not just a nice um do unto others practical uh, i mean i mean you know fancy saying it, it's um th it's actual practical it's almost like what comes up must come down like um jesus wasn't <laughs> talking about like this is a way to do it because it's not ever going to come back to you no he was talking about he, and he maybe he didn't explain it f further enough uh, i mean or that you didn't get it but He's actually saying it because that's what's going to come back to you. It, it always does. It always does. Whenever we start, um, you know, in the, the wiretappings and, 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 you know, invading people's civil liberties in one area, it's just going to, um, it always ends up being the whole populace after a while. It's yeah. just, it's always well, the case. And this is another item, uh, like, like you, you mentioned, which we're not... Are, is not covered in the mainstream uh, media by any stretch, but I mean, I'm looking at a law. It's physics. Yeah. at a headline here from Wired.com that says, oh, the picture of a drone says 29 dead in eight days as U.S. puts Yemen drone war in overdrive. And down in the first line it says 29 dead in a little over a week, nearly 200 killed this year. I mean, how, how can we build friendships overseas if we're busy raining destruction from above? I mean, do you think, I mean, we, maybe we could 
try to trade with these countries. Um, maybe, you know, not to say we couldn't help them, like, try to capture some people with advisors sent over there or whatever. But, sure. But it's got to be transparent, too. I mean, does it make us weaker, like, being transparent and being able to show our flaws? Or do you think someone who's able to show their flaws, plus if someone can show their flaws, they can also heal those flaws a lot quicker? Um, like uh, almost like superhumanly quicker because they have it out in the open and it refines them and makes them stronger, I think. But, yes, um, I, th I think the choice is B. It's clearly B because that shows your strength, you know, in, in displaying that you have some flaws and that you're willing to talk it over, you're willing to work on fixing them. Uh, I think it makes you radically radically uh, better uh, public position than if you just simply cover up everything. I think that would um, if, if that would intimidate our enemies um, more than anything in the world, just be, uh, being that honest and having this national debate. I mean, we won th the war against the Soviet Union because of rock and roll, blue jeans, freedom, uh, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and we, we could do the same thing. It's just that we've lost that spirit and, and, and our government doesn't reflect it. It's uh, so, um, I, I mean, I think we covered a lot of the issues. We covered the economy, and these all relate to police states um, and uh, the, the Constitution, gun rights. Um, sure. y you know, uh, uh, it, 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 this is it, pretty good um, coverage here. Um, now, um, we always um, end in asking, um, well, what is um, some of your favorites, uh, pre you know, people, uh, other people like that? Um, that, that you've been reading about or that uh, could be someone nowadays? I mean, just what are some of your favorite people and uh, why, sir? Well, I, I like Jefferson, although I'm, I'm a little conflicted because, you know, nobody's perfect, I guess. And uh, a lot of people point back to the fact that, that he did own slaves, uh, which, of course, was uh, trendy at the time. Um, but... But boy, as a as a big thinker who helped found our country, uh, Jefferson, I think is a is a guy I look up to. I mean, even there's a lot of people that can admire him and um, uh, and uh, his words and and you, you know what he was striving for. I mean, that even if someone, you know, and it's not like we're him as the individual, so we have to feel you, you know in any sense sure. guilty for him. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, he made his own decisions. Even John Adams wrote saying he dis, you know, until we get rid of slavery. And, and so there were people that knew it was wrong back oh, then. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. And, um, well, so, another one, but another one I like. His principles, a lot of people, I mean, even Frederick Douglass, you know, admired <laughs> his um, freedoms and stuff. I mean, it's the principles are, are there, uh, and, and they're just those principles regardless of who wrote them. They're bigger than a person. He, oh, yeah. He didn't, like, necessarily invent those. He discovered those principles there's another guy that I like a lot uh, in fact a man that I, I I met several times when I was a teenager and his name uh, his name was Leonard Reed and mr. Reed was the founder of an organization called the foundation for economic education and fee as it's known for short uh, was the original libertarian think tank in our country and they have their headquarters up uh, north of New York City on the Hudson River at a little tiny town called Irvington on Hudson and one of he, he wrote he was a prolific writer and he wrote uh, uh, a little booklet called anything that's peaceful and that basically is a, a primer for the libertarian idea that you should be able to cooperate and avoid the use of the police power of the state and, and cooperatively accomplish any and all goals that you need to accomplish. Yeah. And uh, Leonard Reed, a fabulous guy, and uh, a great organization which, which really spun off a lot of the others that you see these days, uh, Cato and some of the other uh, libertarian-oriented uh, organizations uh, kind of got their start through the efforts of, of Leonard Reed and the, the staff at, the, at FEE. Yeah. So I like him a lot. I also, I'm, a, I'm also a student of uh, Ludwig von Mises, uh, for the Austrian School of Economics, free market economics, and, uh, you know, uh, sound money and, and no Fed and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Ron Paul people will be very familiar with. Oh, yeah. Um, so von Mises is a big hero, you know, in, in, uh, in economics. Oh, yeah, he's a big-time ec economist, and um, I'd, 
Yeah, that's true. That's true. So uh, those are those are a few of the a few of the people that I, I look up to, and I I try to read uh, as much as I can. But boy, I'll tell you, there's just been an explosion in uh, in in the literature, and lots of great authors. You know, Thomas Woods is a, a great author. John Stossel, uh, you know, very easy to read guy that shares uh, libertarian uh, principles uh, very fluently. He's had some great shows on, on that, yeah, the um, on, on economics and lots of other things. Yeah, I find him pretty entertaining. Tom Woods is, uh, you know, good character for sure. Definitely. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. There's and, and there's more and more of these people are becoming more visible, too, with the, the ease with which you can get stuff published, obviously, on the Internet and the sharing of information and all that. Uh, uh, makes it. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's so fun learning about all these um, different thoughts. I, I mean, and and economics is fun too because um, it's almost to me. I mean, I see it. It's almost like the environment. Um, the discussion with economics because economists, you know, they they're talking about they have form. It's it's like a science, but then it's also like an art. And um, <laughs> and, and and really, what the Austrians are saying, it's kind of like. Um, they're kind of like Yoda, saying like you know, be free. They're very um, like live and let live kind of. Um, oh, absolutely. It's basically just like the like a free market is basically like environmentalists saying, leave the environment alone. I mean, it's 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 the exact same concept, and so many metaphors can can go back and forth between the two of those. Um, if if you're talking about people who are like true like natural environment. To us, um, the meta and and basically what they're trying to say is a free market is a living entity in, in a sense um, that takes a kind of a life of its own in a sense, but but of a bunch of individuals. And I mean the way I see it, I've 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 because I, I like to look at all angles. I like to read about. Sure. I mean Ralph Nader interests me, and and I, I you know I could see a way of like you know possibly funding solar across. I think that'd be a better way to spend it on bailing out banks. But but you know it's not something I'm pushing hard. It's just it's just I can imagine it. Um, and you notice reduce... you notice I haven't said anything bad about the banks tonight because you have to be real careful. Oh, well, we mentioned Goldman Sachs a few if you're times. A, yeah. If you're dissing the bank. Banks, you know, you may not be around too long. Well, there are good banks too. I mean, we. I think after the economic collapse, I mean, <laughs> what, how we would a free market way of doing it would have been the, the smaller and mid-sized banks, um, which are also banks. I mean, there's nothing wrong with banks, but these would be small, mid-sized ones who didn't need the bailouts. They could have bought up the pieces and, and then taken over the mortgages and stuff like sure. that. And, um, and and so it would have been fine. And instead of rewarding people who failed by giving the small mid size and, and our money by tax dollars and putting us in debt um, instead of giving that to the failures who never got fired who got right. uh, larger bonuses we could yep. it, it would have been a natural reward in the free markets um, so it, it, it's 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 like um it's like trying to prevent um, those uh, forest fires like uh, sometimes they say sometimes they need to have some forest fires now I can understand around homes and stuff but <laughs> in some places it, it's it's the exact same thing in environment if we keep pushing something that that needs to happen but the, to me the ultimate compromise between progressives because I could imagine possibly a public option as well but it would have to be voluntary and pay for itself yeah. so to me that's those are the two main things to, to, to see if it's a worthwhile um, government program I mean does it well does it violate any um, uh, constitutional rights um, and, and that kind of is like is it voluntary so mm -hmm, if it's completely mm -hmm. voluntary where you can totally opt out you don't have to choose it at all um, and uh, and then of course it pays for itself so I can understand people getting sure. together mm -hmm. through it not having to pay as many being able to buy in bulk having accountability through elected officials um, and, and so on not having to pay advertising costs um, CEO uh, you know huge uh, crazy bonuses and, and stuff <laughs> like that and, and poss you know that who knows I don't know it, it might work it might not it could be yeah. something that could be looked at but, um, but you know it, it, it what it has unfortunately it has the, the downside like catastrophic or something like that yeah go ahead I was gonna say it has the downside is is that we haven't tried you know, we don't we, even discuss like things like this. Now. We I mean, we have the system that we have, and you and I can get together and we can talk about alternatives. But the only thing we can say for certain is that if we tried the alternatives, it would be a different sort of a situation. 
you know, we, we operate, you and I, at the moment, within the framework of what we know, of, of our own experiences. Right, right. And we've, without all the information, we don't know, uh, do we won't have a good, you know, our full set of options. Right. And there's uh, a couple more authors. There's a, one of our uh, founders of our Libertarian Party is a, a fellow named Harry Brown. Oh, yeah. Well, I voted for him before, too. Well, there you go. See? Harry Brown, he's a, a fabulous writer, and uh, just he was just a wonderful guy. I met him a, year, a number of years ago. Uh, just a, 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 an amazing guy who always had something positive to say. Yeah, he's a very positive guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's, it's, it's, I mean, to me, it's, uh, like, he, what, do you think, um, like, someone in the Green, like, there are a lot of fusion candidates out there this year, yes. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've talked to a couple of people that are libertarians endorsed by the Green Party, a couple of people in yep. the Green Party endorsed by libertarians. I mean, uh, do you think, um, like, practically speaking, I mean, besides all the principled things of everyone deserves, it's a right, you know, to have health care and a job, it, it's, um, but, but, but you want the same results, you just have a different way of getting it. It's, uh, do you think practically now, in, in the climate we're in, in 2012, if someone was part of the Green Party, um, and I'm just, and even if they were a part of Republican Party, um, I mean, th those two types of people, you would still be both of theirs um, best choice. Yes, uh, and and you know the reason because being of is the big issues. Yeah. Well, you know, I I, I, I talk yeah. to a lot of people, and Idaho tends to be a very uh, Republican-oriented uh, state. Uh, my district, as I. I I think I never finished telling you about, but it's it's 500 miles tall, and uh, encompasses nine, portions of 19 counties, and we have only two representatives. So it's it's ha the left, the 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 western half of Idaho, from the bottom to the way up to the top in the Panhandle, and uh, uh, tends to be kind of a conservative crowd. But when I talk to people one on one, practically everybody is some version of a libertarian because the basic libertarian tenets are we're fiscally conservative but we're socially tolerant. Yeah. And boy that covers a pretty broad brush, you that, know? That 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 is yeah, that that that's um, life. I mean, I mean, that's human nature. I mean, that's how we. That's the way most that. people want to live their life. That's but what yeah. a civilized. That's that's the goal. I mean, now even if like let's even if we're two hundred another two hundred years away from this ideal state, shouldn't <laughs> shouldn't we be putting forth the efforts in our own individual lives every day to to actually you know live that dream and um and and, uh, and encourage it along i mean it's it's um and, and then we might have sparks of it um maybe we're just 100 years away maybe we're just well, 50 and, and, years and, away I and mean. that's exactly what i what i recommend to people on my facebook page i say live your life as if you're free yeah you know do your absolute very best to live your life to the fullest and and be as as free as you can you know uh when i was a kid we never had any interaction with anybody from the federal government ever in my little town. We occasionally saw somebody from the city government and occasionally some county guy would come around, but never, or I say never, rarely anybody from, from the state capitol would show up in our little burg. And as I say, never anybody from the federal government. And over the years, as I've gone from teenager to, well, I'm a few years past teenage now, let's just say, okay? But the growth of the government and the government's encroachment on our individual lives has been just breathtaking. I mean, it's stunning. If you looked at, at the, uh, the government involvement in our lives back in the 50s, what I'm talking about, late 50s, to now, 50 years later, it's, you know, you, you wouldn't recognize our country and, and what has happened to us. And we need to, we need to roll back a bit. I mean, on how about that. get rid of, you, you, you know, well, cut back this Homeland Security apparatus, uh, you know, uh, within reasonable levels, cut, cut, you know, they, they, they're, I mean, there's so many things where the, it's almost like they're punishing people because, um, 
because if they don't, then they're going to be found out that there's no work for them anymore. Uh, yeah. And uh, yes. And we and we have special interests in the FDA. Um, I mean, I have nothing against meat inspections or anything, but but we definitely have special interests in there that are hurting our small um, farmers and 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 small companies. There's special interests in the business departments. I, I mean, um, th there's people who are having their land taken and, and being given lots of fines because, you know, the EPA says this is a waterway or, or this and that. And, and well, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, back, I'm back to my earlier point. There is no justification. There's no federal authority for an EPA to exist. The DEA also, I mean, the drug wars costed about a trillion dollars over the last two decades. Again, no authority for it to exist. Yeah, and, and I mean, it just you know, we we have to we have to frame the we have to frame the discussion in terms of of should we be doing something, not can we make it more efficient. You know, we we have to figure out is our government behaving and and performing as it's intended and designed to perform, and and maybe maybe some of these activities that people really and truly want, and if so, we should amend the constitution. Right, right, of course. I you mean, know, that, that make work business or convert the work, uh, that was very, very visible when prohibition was, was abolished back in the 30s. Uh, and all of those revenuers suddenly were out of work. And so they converted them over to uh, alcohol, tobacco, firearms people. They became ATF, the, you know, the, the predecessor to the ATF. And suddenly, you know, you have, to, you have to get after people about all these new regulations we're going to put on so that we can keep all these uh, alcohol inspectors, you know, Well, the main thing is work. people want security, and they want economic security, especially if they have a family. I mean, there's some things that it, maybe if we took some of the heat off of there, um, then, then people wouldn't feel like so much like, oh, we have to keep this department open to keep the... Um, paychecks coming in is that um, well number one give people a freer more productive um, uh, country and environments and maybe they won't feel like they have to like keep some of these programs alive correct um, yes number two is give them better property rights I mean I, I would <laughs> a lot of people I'm not saying you would go for this but I would personally I mean to vote for a constitutional amendment that would get rid of make it illegal to even have property taxes and, and um, and uh, well, but that's just my opinion. And um, and uh, maybe open up more like land and lots for like people to be able to buy land and just build on it and not have so many permits and stuff and uh, and have to go through rigor maru. I mean, and just and and not have this country in so much debt. I mean, so our dollars worth a lot more. That will give people a lot more purchasing power. Um, and uh, y you know, just having and having a more level playing field. I mean, by not. You know, have, and, and making you feel more free, which will also bring more, you, you know, it, 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 it's everyone's going to rise in this tide. I, I mean, it, 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 once we, you, you know, let the freedom in, I, I mean, it's just by other people doing well, you're also going to do better. I mean, I don't get, you know, I'm not looking for anything out of these conversations with you. I just feel that if we have more good people in Congress who are principled, who are independent, not just in label, I mean, but just, um, you know, third party independents, people who are constitutional, that that's to me that that's the reward right there. I mean, it's, well, it's going to yes. be a better country. Um, the only the only thing I would add to the what you just described is that I don't think people would just feel more free. I think they would actually be more oh, yeah, free. Yeah. I mean, I, I think then there's a distinction there. It's like when I go to get on an airplane, uh, you know, I say, well, why do we have all this security? And they say, well, we want you to feel like you're safer getting on the airplane and you know I have to hold my tongue because I want to tell the guy well okay I can feel all safer but I'm really not because I know better yeah it's just kind of like okay your right leg hurts all right let me get to hit your left one with a hammer now does your right do you still feel the right <laughs> one anymore um, uh, all right so yeah I think yeah uh, that's a the, that's a Soviet's program there um, or, or something you would think it's <laughs> turning into mirrors but um, so w w well Rob it's good talking to you I'm sure there's a couple other issues we could go over but um, I, I mean I wish you much success oh, I, yeah I, I appreciate the, and, yeah. appreciate the opportunity and of course I, I can go on and on all night, of course, but uh, but no, you know the, the the one last thing I would mention, uh, based on what you were just saying about getting some. Please uh, do. If there's anything third, um, you need to mention, I well, no, I'm just I'm just uh, one one thought came to mind when you mentioned the value of getting a libertarian and, and other third party independent kind of uh, people into Congress. 
uh, is that over the years, congressional rules have have developed that dramatically favor the the two parties that are in power, taking turns with that power, and that's a part of the the, the whole seniority system is a part of what an incumbent comes back home and says, oh, well, you sure need to elect me again because next term I'm going to be the uh, deputy chairman of such and such a powerful committee. Excellent point, Rob. That's why I'm doing this. That's part of um, uh, this LibertarianProgressive.com information awareness uh, yep. campaign that we're having here and um, covering the 2012 uh, elections here for the uh, U.S. Um, and U.S. of A. And uh, so, um, excellent point. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, because they're going to ask you to caucus with the Republicans or the Democrats, and I've already talked to a couple of people who said they're going to refuse to do that. Um, and imagine if we—it's going to help people like Rob. If hopefully he gets there, um, and uh, if there's, you know, if if he imagine Rob being going there and you're, you know, being a freshman in Congress and having 50 peers um, that are also libertarians, independents, Green Party people um, who are dead set against the wars, who are against the drug wars, who want to restore our Bill of Rights, um, get rid of the Patriot Act, the NDAA, restore America, yep. I mean, who have that, you know, revolutionary spirit in them. Imagine going there and meeting, like, 49 other people like that. Wouldn't that be something? Well, yeah, that would be absolutely fantastic, and, and we, would, we would form an independent caucus. And, and we would form our own group, and, and we would welcome, uh, you know, rebels from the other two existing parties, as well as all of this uh, hodgepodge of people elected across the country to represent their various uh, districts. And, and we would form our own caucus, and who knows, you know, we, we might be big enough to, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to affect some change. I mean, and that would sure be the goal, would be to get a, a steamroller going that, that could change the complexion of Congress so that it, it truly was more reflective of the people and, and began to pull us back toward uh, getting our federal government operating as it was intended in our, our founding documents. Yeah, I mean, to people who might be um, needing to think out of the box a little bit, I'd, I'd say to them, let's at least get our Congress back. Um, Absolutely, you know, yeah. Let's at least yeah. get our Congress back, and, and, and it's... it's uh, you know, 535 people, I think. Look, I mean, 50, that's, I mean, I should be saying, like, you know, 500, but uh, <laughs> but, but 50 would be enough at least to, to, to you know, be that shot heard around the world. Um, and, uh, and, and so, yeah, it's just the, um, and that's Ralph Waldo Emerson talking about the uh, American Revolutionary War. The first, um, it, it has four little paragraphs. The first one, I'll just read the first and the last one. It says, the poem is, By the rude bridge that arched the flood, their flag to April's breeze unfurled, um, have once the embattled farmers stood and fired the shot heard around the world. And then the last um, paragraph, spirit that made those spirits dare to die and leave their children free, bid time and nature gently spare that thee shalt we raise to them and thee. And um, so you can Google that if you mm -hmm. want. But mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Rob, good talking with you. Uh, we'll uh, pay attention to your campaign. Hopefully you see on the debates. Um, and uh, Well, I, uh, I submitted a packet to my, uh, my, my uh, Idaho debates organization, uh, in fact, just uh, last night. And so hopefully they will, they will see fit to invite me to the debates. But nothing is set. You know, it, it's, it's so funny. The, uh, the incumbent and the Democrat challenger uh, both were on uh, paper in the primary, and, and they ran against, uh, again, paper candidates. Uh, and so there was no actual uh, running, no actual campaigning, but they won on paper, so they get an automatic invitation. But the other independent guy and myself as libertarian, we have to justify that we're running active campaigns even though the 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 other two don't have to do anything, and yeah. it, it's 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 just an incredible you know everything's everything's focused on maintaining that power, and so we're we're doing our darn darn dead level best to try to break that we're fighting it, the it, battles in the districts i mean we're getting yeah. out there we're putting pressure we're calling the people in the media saying you know i want to hear all my voices i want to hear <laughs> if, 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 if you don't have rob's voice in there then uh, my voice is not being heard and uh you, you know you need to call them up and um 
you know, put that same passion as if you found out you had like a $2,000 phone bill or something after traveling <laughs> to Cancun or wherever you want to go. Um, That's right. You, you know, so call them up and what, 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 what is, you know, going on here? Um, so uh, de definitely, um, you, you know, we, it, it, and, and that will get the ball rolling. Once we get 50, it's going to make it a lot easier. Then, then oh, we're, yeah. you know, going to yeah. get like 100 um, two years from then. Yep. And uh, so this is, for like you said, for, for your kids, for the future, for, um, I mean, geez, just uh, the thought of, you know, making known that you made the world a better place so that people who are um, with no choice of their own born into this world um, are born into a free country um, for uh, Pete's sake. Um, yeah. So, um, all right. So, well, Rob, good talking to you. Um, I'll say goodbye to you right after this interview, and I hope you have an excellent evening, sir. Okay. And well, thanks so much uh, for inviting me. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Yeah. If they want to know more, just go to Rob Oates, R-O-B-O-A-T-E-S uh, dot com. And um, so have a good night, Rob. Thank you. Peace.